Welcome aboard! I am Lynn Bacani. This is Maritime Viewpoints on Marino World Online. We bring you another interesting episode today as we will be joined by an expert in maritime medicine, the Chief Medical Officer of Health Metrics, Dr. Toby Abaya. Good evening, uh, Dr. Abaya, and welcome uh, to the program. Hello. Yeah. Greetings to everyone who's uh, aboard this uh, interesting uh, presentation. So, Dr. Toby, let's go straight to the health issue. What are your thoughts about uh, COVID-19 and how do the different vaccines against this disease work? Uh, for instance, on efficacy? You know, there are several vaccines and we are all looking at the different kinds of vaccines. First, one has to understand what vaccines do. They, they create antibodies so that we can fight the disease. Vaccines create a small part of the disease in your body, and then you can create antibodies, and these antibodies will protect you from further exposure. Mm -hmm. There are different ways of doing this, and some of them really include putting in a weakened virus, which you're trying to fight. Uh, you're using sometimes some part of the virus into a weak or a normal virus, and it's injected to you. And then you are getting um, sometimes the new uh, kind of vaccines, which we call the mRNA, is putting genetic material of the virus inside you so that it will be identified and it can be attacked and antibodies can be created and we create a natural defense for future infections. The other question you had was efficacy. I think the basic fear of, um, of people really when they get COVID is will I die? Because with the great uh, numbers of people who have died, that is like our biggest fear. And when we talk of efficacy, I think and I believe that all the vaccines available now will actually say you have a 90 to almost 100% chance of not dying. So in effect, what this vaccine does is actually save lives. That's the most important thing. Save lives, prevent you from getting severe disease that you will be hospitalized and practically destroy or limit the spread of the virus. So that's the most important things the vaccines can do. So uh, how do this uh, type of vaccines differ? An example is a polio vaccine, which is a weakened polio virus, which is in injected into the human body. Once this weakened virus is injected, the body's immune system and defenses go into action and create antibodies. They take a picture of this, and once they have the antibodies ready, any next attack of this virus will be defeated by the present antibodies since they already have the design of the antibodies prepared. The other one is to put um, important components inside a normal virus, the one that doesn't work on us specifically, it's called the adenovirus. And these ones will be um, injected into you. The body will identify the protein and say, we can create antibodies. And the third one is injecting the mRNA. And those are the ones that are replicating the different genetic components of the virus so that again we create antibodies and defend the uh, defend ourselves against future infections here in the philippines we have different brands representing the three different kinds of uh, vaccine mechanisms that i previously discussed those um, for the mra mrna which includes the moderna and the virus those which are traditional weakened virus like the Sinovac. And the vector virus, which contains the normal um, virus, are the AstraZeneca and the Sputnik and even the J&J. &J. So uh, as an expert in um, um, maritime medicine, uh, 
Uh, what do you think is the best uh, COVID-19 vaccine for our seafarers, considering uh, the factors involved in the all, all the vaccines are good. Mm -hmm. The the issue right now is how to get them quickly into the uh, arms of our seafarers. Um, the great majority of seafarer uh, of um, the great majority of injections are the two dose in, uh, injections as of now, and therefore there is a logistic issue of preparing whether you know you can inject now and wait four weeks for the um, Moderna and the Pfizer Sinovac vaccines before and wait two weeks after your second dose before you can go. There is the J&J, &J, the Johnson & Johnson, the Janssen, which is only a single dose and you theoretically get in, you know, um, full uh, immunity after uh, two weeks after the shot. Uh, and then you have AstraZeneca, which need, which has an interval of 12 weeks or almost three months between shots to get its full effect. And therefore, in a logistic, in a logistic um, way of looking at things, it's more ideal, really, to give the one shot. And that's the reality. If we could only give our seafarers one shot and then they can go after two weeks, that would be ideal. So it's an issue of uh, supply and demand as a GNJ. The Johnson and Johnson vaccine will only need um, one shot, but it's uh, not readily available as of this time. The dilemma we have is since the other vaccines need two shots, we have to plan this so that the intervals and the development of the full vaccination two weeks after will be totally given before the seafarer goes abroad. And that's what we're working on right now, because most of the vaccines need a four week interval and then two weeks to get the full effect of the vaccine. That's the issue that's being discussed right now. Another issue is a geopolitical issue with regards to what vaccines are accepted in other countries. You see right now, um, Europe and the United States for that matter are saying that only those in the um, uh, created in the Western Hemisphere, meaning the American and probably even the uh, AstraZeneca included vaccines will be allowed. There are no clear guidelines yet on whether the Chinese and the Russian vaccines are accepted by uh, the Western world. And that is a problem for our seafarers. So we, we, we have to be careful and, and government is, is aware of that and is trying to um, adjust so that our seafarers get the vaccines they need to be able to board the ships. I understand uh, health metrics is also a member of IMHA. Uh, so how do the, the private sector, the, the international organizations um, well, act on the so Belgium was uh, one of the first countries to volunteer its services to vaccinate uh, seafarers uh, from all over the world. Any nationality that passes through Antwerp is eligible for vaccination. And um, the Netherlands also followed. The United States also is vaccinating. And um, lately they pass by their ports. The only issue again is the second shot. So how how can they plan everything so that they can get the second shot since they're constantly moving and they don't know where they'll go. So the ideal is really to give the single dose vaccine, which is uh, the Johnson and Johnson, but uh, further planning is on the way and they're looking at possibilities of a different combination vaccines, giving one brand and another brand for the booster shot or extending the uh, time interval between the two shots. So, you know, there is a lot of uh, movement in vaccinating seafarers, the Philippines is cooperating, and a lot of uh, different countries um, who realize the importance of seafarers are also cooperating. And what are the other important things uh, to consider before, during, and after vaccinating a seafarer? Especially those who are uh, uh, going well, on board international vessels. Yeah, I, I think the most important 
important is uh, really to make sure what are the requirements of the vessel um, if they or, or the flag state of the vessel whether they are averse to having a um, the Chinese vaccines that's becoming an issue right now because they might not accept some of the Chinese vaccines even though they are WHO recognized already and uh, they have emergency use authority from the WHO so we're trying to look at the different um, ways of getting the Western vaccines, namely Moderna, j and and Pfizer into the uh, arms of our seafarers. But that's very difficult also because of the logistic issue with these vaccines that they have to be given, uh, you know, at minus 80 and minus 40 degrees. And that's another problem. So there, there are lots of, uh, you know, um, issues we have to deal with besides logistics. It's also interval planning. It's also the scheduling for deployment. So all of these must be taken into consideration. How about you in uh, health metrics? How are you uh, preparing for this uh, when uh, the, the, the vaccines can uh, already be uh, procured by the private sector? Presently, since most of the vaccines being distributed right now are the ones uh, purchased by government through co or donated through COVAX, it's, uh, the local government units who are uh, distributing and doing the inoculations. However, when we will be tapped as a private sector to inoculate, we have many, many years already of uh, doing vaccination procedures. We have been vaccinating seafarers for MMR, for polio, for pneumonia, for measles, for hepatitis. So we have the experience and uh, we know the logistics of preparing mass vaccination. And what's the advantage of having a, a molecular laboratory, in-house molecular laboratory? Yeah, um, we saw in the beginning that uh, the molecular laboratory was important when people were being repatriated. But then again, we saw that also for leaving the country, the molecular laboratory was also required by uh, many governments, our go own government and many um, um, receiving countries. And therefore we decided that uh, we should invest and build our own. It would be more convenient for the seafarer since, and we would be uh, very attuned to the needs of the seafarers because we know that they have to be quarantined and tested right before the flight and it's a certain, so if it's all in-house, the pre-employment medical exam and the, um, and the uh, RT-PCR, it would be more, it would be easier for both manning agents, shipping companies and the, 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 the crew to have it done in one place. And that's why we uh, built our own uh, laboratory. And how about for the vaccines? Uh, are you ready for the storage areas? Uh, we are ready for two specific um, vaccines, which include mm -hmm. um, the uh, Sinovac and the AstraZeneca, should we invest in it. For the Moderna, we have been assured that it will be transported on a regular basis from our supplier in a minus 40 degree, but we have to be very quick in injecting them on a daily basis um, because they're under they're supposed to be at the minus 40 i believe so minus 40 degrees centigrade is not an easy uh, temperature to reach with uh, um, regular freezers you have to get special freezers however since we will be getting them on the day that we will inject it should be um, important for us to be able to use up all the doses right away and therefore our planning and logistics will be very critical. So you have three uh, branches uh, in health metrics, uh, Dr. Uh, Toby. Mm -hmm. I yes. those are all yes. uh, prepared for the vaccination. Yes, yes. We've got an accreditation already for um, in Iloilo is still working on their accreditations and uh, the different requirements of the DOH to be a licensed uh, COVID-19 vaccination center. We'll just take a short break. We'll be discussing more about vaccinating our sick waivers on board vessels. 
still with Dr. Toby Abaya, Chief Medical Officer of Health Metrics. Covadis Marina STCW, a webinar between regulators and stakeholders on STCW policies and implementations. June 25, Day of the Seafarer, organized by Marino World. Covadis Marina STCW, with primary guest, Vice Admiral Robert M. Pedrad, Administrator, Maritime Industry Authority. And distinguished panelists, Mr. Guy Platten, Secretary General, ICF. Mr. Jerry Buchanan, Managing Director, Lisker Hong Kong. Mr. Adam Lewis, Training and Operations Head, IMEC. Captain Edgardo Flores, Member, Technical Panel for Maritime Education. Ms. Karen Avellino, President, PAM TCI. Mr. Sabino Sarman Likmot II, President, PAMI. Captain Jaime Quinones, President, MAMAC. Chief Engineer Gilbert Milana, President, OCMEO. Covadis Marina STCW are Platinum Sponsors. The PTC Group, Liberian Registry, DSM Group, Gold Sponsors, the Marshall Islands Registry, AMUSU, Mariana Academy of Maritime Studies, OSM Maritime, Eastern Mediterranean Mining Agency, Integrated Seafarers of the Philippines, Nowatun Maritime, Globe Maritime Training Center, Silver Sponsors, Health Metrics, Resist, Kongsberg, Seversity, Bronze Sponsors, Dulacy Front, Sims. Come join and speak up. Let regulators hear your views. What if I tell you that KSIM Connect has become a reality? It is the cloud-based ecosystem for maritime education and training, where Kongsberg provides simulation and services to all members. As an instructor, my main goal is to educate and train seafarers to acquire skills promoting safety, sustainability and efficiency at sea. At KSIM Connect, I can efficiently manage my simulators, my exercises and my students. In the exercise archive, I can store my library of exercises and, if I want, collaborate and share them with my colleagues or others in the global community. KSIM Connect enables me to give students access to cloud simulation so they can train anytime and anywhere while learning at their own pace. In addition, I can explore the library of models and exercise areas, download or subscribe those that fit the learning objectives. And I can even order spare parts or a service visit if needed. Kongsberg has started to create the future of maritime education and training by creating the community where instructors can find news, explore and download available simulator models, distribute or share exercises that fit the curriculum. Imagine using Case and Connect to integrate our simulators in the same virtual exercise environment, enabling students to train and interact together. It doesn't matter whether you're in Singapore, Australia or in the United States. As long as you're online, you are part of the knowledge sharing community. Kongsberg is shaping the future of maritime education and training by creating the community. Let's continue building this community together for the benefit of ourselves and the entire maritime training industry. Join Case in Connect today.
It all started from building homes in the South and transformed into providing roof for every Filipino family. Solar Resources Incorporated residential developments lets you live in space that allows you to achieve a balanced lifestyle. Las Brisas is the newest 9-hectare residential community nestled inside an expansive master plan development of Tierra del Sol in Panza, Cavite. Offering around-the-clock security, a playground for the kids, and leisure hubs for your relaxation and entertainment. This residential community is located between Panza and Trece Mártires, Cavite. It's only 4.3 kilometers away from SM City Trece, Tower Mall Trece, and Public Market. It is accessible via Manila, via Cavitex, and upcoming developments such as Cavite Laguna Expressway and construction of the LRT1 extension. Solar Resources Incorporated is committed to offering you your ideal home that makes valuable investment and that great suburban experience. Retreat to this southern residence and make your move into something new. Start new living with Solar Resources. What else could you uh, uh, share with us on uh, the, the, this uh, COVID-19 disease, uh, especially uh, for our seafarers? How would you uh, um, advise them, especially those on board? On board, you know, actually during this pandemic, we were thinking that the seafarer on board was a, a safe place to be. But in the past few months, I've received um, several calls, SOS calls of crew actually um, infected on board. Um, sadly, even one mortality. Um, so just because you're on board, it doesn't mean that you're 100% safe, safe uh, staying on board. Um, you still have to practice um, your social distancing, wearing your masks most especially when you are on board because you are not um, sure of what kind of uh, exposure you have from the pilots, from the stevedores, from the board inspectors and all that. So it is important that you screen them properly, make sure that before they come on board, which you have to do anyway, that they have no temp they have no fevers. You have to screen them that they're wearing double masks. You have to screen that they're not touching anything um, which they're not supposed to touch and limit the time you spend on board. And lastly, keep a safe distance from them because they could be transmitters of the disease.
disease since you go from different words all the time. So you have to be double the intensity in all the COVID-19 measures, especially when you are at port, when people come on board, because that's the biggest source of possible infections. And what are the, the, the protocols on board international vessels when uh, the crew uh, are already having uh, the symptoms of COVID? Uh, what, what should the other crew or the officers on board do? Well, first, they should find a place to contact to be able to get confirmation um, that it is a possible COVID case. Um, obviously, they have to find the nearest port to discharge the patient um, before he deteriorates. It's important that people isolate each other because if there's one case there, it's possible that he might have exposed others to um, COVID-19. So in a close environment, the first rule there would be for them you know, to eat separately, if they can have separate quarters already or, or move to deck, we required that for one ship that had um, multiple exposures before they got them, uh, before they neared port. So we had to look for other places where they could rest and sleep. Uh, and, and basically just keep distance and monitor each other's symptoms. And finally, when you get to port, then everybody will have to be tested because it, one is tested positive on board, the chances that you're going to find other people on board also. So to limit that, you have to be more vigilant and more aware of what is happening to you and the rest of your crewmates. Dr. Toby, uh, did you have uh, um, an experience of assisting uh, seafarers on board with COVID-19? or? Yes, we did. Uh, uh, I have uh, actually received uh, several calls to, to do, you know, manage some of the symptoms that were happening on board and direct them on what the options were, the best way to do things. Uh, we also repatriated uh, people who were positive for COVID and had uh, survived but had uh, you know uh, compromised lung function so they needed medical escorts going back home so yes there have been cases and that's why I, we're pretty aware that you know seafarers still can get COVID at this day and age and therefore vaccination as it is coming and getting more um, available to everyone should be taken advantage of what could you advise to those uh, uh, telling that, oh, uh, we are already uh, uh, free from COVID-19 or we cannot get COVID-19 because we have the, this uh, strong immune system, we have this vitamins, supplements, yeah. is enough to... No, no, it, it, it's good, but it's not enough, really. Um, if you look at the data, especially in 2021, um, the, uh, the age difference of people who are getting the disease is slowly getting younger and younger, and even the healthy people are getting infected. So um, we are aware that it has uh, mutated already. There's already a fourth mutation, the Delta, var uh, the Delta mutant, which is even more transmissible. Happily, though, we have information already that the vaccines are... Uh, playing its role in defending against them. So it's advisable to really go and get the vaccine. It has been proven already that it is safe. Safe in the sense that a DOH, a, um, DOH is proud to say that of the 3 million who've been uh, injected, no one has actually died from the vaccine. So it's safe. We've had already, and the evidence will show in the United States that the number of cases have gone down. They've opened the country already. And the reason why is because they already have hundreds of millions of doses already distributed among its population available. But yes, it's proving that yes, it will lower the risk of infection 
and there will be less cases already. In the United States, 309 million doses were given. As compared to the Philippines, where as of two days ago, we have already given 6.3 million doses and 1.68 million people are already fully vaccinated, which is 1.6% of the population. So we're still a long way off. And that's why if the seafarers are given a chance to get their vaccines while on board, or even before they leave, we advise them to please go for it because it's important that they stay healthy even while sailing. We hope we can uh, get a pie of that uh, donation from uh, the U.S. Uh, U.S. President Biden uh, just uh, uh, announced that they are uh, donating uh, around 500 uh, million doses of vaccines. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And when you add the G7 in, it'll add up to 1 billion. So they're, they're, that's really for the 100 poorest countries in the world. But beyond that, we should be thinking of the opportunity that they're doing already for the seafarers when they go to the different ports um, all over the world. Uh, as I mentioned, there are several countries already who are offering to all nationalities the opportunity to get a COVID-19 vaccine. And if there are some seafarers now listening who are on board right now, the next chance, the next port you can go to and get the vaccine, go for it. It's important to get one. And Dr. Toby, who should uh, administer the, the vaccination? I mean, um, well, the, the vaccinations are done by any qualified health personnel, be they doctors, nurses, uh, paramedics, um, even technicians, medical technicians, healthcare workers in general, properly trained to give injections, can't give the vaccine. Because there are already uh, some uh, who uh, in, in ports abroad, um, there are uh, people uh, going on board to vaccinate seafarers. Correct, correct, correct. That's uh, and then we should be happy that they're doing that, so it gets a chance to even keep our seafarers safe, which is very important. But what should be the process and uh, uh, those considerations uh, when vaccinating seafarers on board? Because uh, uh, how about the side effects? Uh, well, um, uh, I'll I'll give you data. The Philippines records that, you know, there are side effects have been seen in 1.44% uh, of the population so far. And the side effects are very mild. Mild by saying that, I mean, they get headaches, weakness, um, fever, but nothing more than 24 to 48 hours. It's like getting the flu. Have you had the flu, Lynn? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's one, two days that you're bedridden, you cannot get up, you're weak, you know, you're feverish, you're having chills, but that's it. And, and that's a sign that your immune system is fighting off. But it just because you don't get any complication doesn't mean your immune system isn't working either. The vaccines have been shown, really, all of them have been shown to decrease the risk of uh, uh, death and uh, severe hospitalization. So um, we still advise, again, I'm going to not stop saying it, but go for the vaccine. The only logistic issue on board would be when your second dose will be and where it will be done. So there's careful planning there because they've got to be getting their second shots in four weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, from your organization like Mark Doc and Imha, could you share some? Um, well, IMHA uh, has been spreading the word around um, through the different countries uh, of their vaccination processes and cooperating on what we can do to um, help speed up the process for a seafarer. So um, in concordance with the IMO and the WHO, we're looking for uh, better ways of uh, administering the vaccines to all seafarers. And uh, what can you say or advise uh, the, the ship owners or uh, even the, the manning agents? Well, the manning agents are all very keen about having their seafarers uh, vaccinated. Um, the issue right now is availability. Mm -hmm. Yet, as of now, it's still, you know, we don't, uh, we're supposed to be in the A4 uh, 
uh, and A4 is being distributed now. The only issue is, as I said before, was the uh, logistics of you know having your two vaccines and the brand of vaccines because that may limit um, the um, vaccination. But that's being worked on by government right now because if we're, we we recently got a large amount of Pfizer doses, so there is a plan to really steer that towards the uh, seafaring group if possible so that they will be allowed to travel uh, on board uh, specific uh, country uh, specific flagships. Dr. Toby, how do you see things uh, now? How do you see the path to recovery from this uh, covid we're, 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 we're still a long way off. The Philippines right now is still, you know, it has NCR has been controlled, but now there are new hotspots. You, if you see our, 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 our Philippine graph, the national level, we our first spike was somewhere around September, and then we went down all the way to 2,000 cases a day. And then come April, when we piked at about 11, 12,000, that was a peak and it started going down. And that's when our vaccine started also. And so NCR, cases have been going down. However, the provinces in the Western Visayas, uh, Dumaguete, uh, Davao, Iloilo are now the, being declared as a new hot spot with um, increased hospital utilization. So we're, we're not yet out of the woods. We still have to be more vigilant and therefore, you know, we, 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 we just have to keep being patient with, uh, you know, the way vaccine administration is slowly moving and you know getting there and we should all be anticipating to have a better end of the year when more vaccines and more vaccinations occur dr toby anything more you would like to emphasize or discuss the the emphasis right now for all our seafarers is go get your shots please uh you're doing yourselves a favor you're doing your the rest of the crew a favor you're doing the country a favor by uh, allowing yourselves to be vaccinated to stay healthy to keep the virus under check and to keep the world moving uh, the families you should also when their turn come get their vaccines also let's protect one another because you're taking the vaccine not only to protect yourself but to protect other members of the community and when you protect other members of the community you limit the spread of the disease and therefore we should all play a role during this pandemic thank you so much dr toby okay thank you thank, thank you, you for joining us on the program Stay safe, everyone. Of course. The Chief Medical Officer of Health Metrics, Dr. Toby Abaya. Thank you for watching Maritime Viewpoints here on Marina World Online. I am Lynn Bacan. Stay safe.